If you saw my video that was the first recorded round of 2024, I went to Oakwood and I figured out how to up the quality but also lost battery power which means I was unprepared and we only made it to hole 12. Long story short, I'm going to go right back to there because I feel kind of bad and I want you guys to see the whole course. Unfortunately, although the snow was clearing up and you would expect the snow to clear up again, it cleared up for like a day. I got three days till my next day off. It's supposed to stop today and it's supposed to get warm enough to melt. So I guess I'm just going to have to wait again. But three days, I'm going to go back out there, take you guys back to Oakwood. Maybe we'll finish it this time. I'm still going to go through the holes in case you didn't see the last video. This one's 320 feet, was originally a two shotter. And then he opened up this fairway and it's a low risk. So everyone just takes that path now. We're going to go with a buzz. That was a good shot. Last time we were here, it was a bunch of snow and ice, so the footing was an issue. Now it's probably gonna be my putting, because last week my putting was doing really well and it was saving it. All right, much closer compared to last time. First try, no warm up. That's what happens. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, hopefully I can start making them. Short story about me, my first two to four putts are usually me kind of remembering how to miss before I start making them. This one I believe was 370 and it's a flex line or a turnover because it's kind of open on the right and you just want to make sure you want to come back which is why typically a flex line because you want to throw something over stable this is the only dirt pad here and it was snow and ice last time now it's mud i think i hate this more this tree too just started bending over recently i don't know if that was in the last week we were here but that's like way in the fairway right now keep going Not bad. I really wish I could get a cement pad on here. Not in a great spot, similar to last week, but I'd rather have this spot. Basket is right over there. I have a small guarded hyzer line. So what I'm gonna do is throw something a, a little faster and thinner just to make sure I get through. Threw off the line I actually intended a little bit. Fortunately though, I still made it just inside circle. Hole three is 285 feet. It's just the riding hyzer to that hill that's in just past those trees over there. It's right beyond that hill. It's a really cool hole. I actually really like this one. Last time with the snow, I had to do a standstill with an octane. I usually do a T-bird. I lost my T-bird, so I have a Haley Keen Vulture. I got real lucky there. With that being a brand new disc, I'm not used to the release points yet. Nothing felt right about that throw. That throw felt real awkward, which is scary. Fortunately, last time we were here at hole two, I got a five on, so already two strokes better. Not bad, but I completely, I do this all the time. I cannot have stuff in my pocket when I putt. It grazes it and then it takes my focus off. I don't know why, I, 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 I don't, Every single round I do this. I don't know how I haven't learned yet. This is our first stretch of birdie runs. Three holes, three birdies, hopefully. This one's about 220 to 240, I think is what it was. Looks like that bush on the left is starting to grow into the fairway. So I think I'm gonna go more overstable to hopefully get a little right and still come back. Maybe I should've just stuck with my normal choice, but after that tree hit, I'm actually only 20 feet away, so it worked out great. About 25 feet actually, 27, but I'll take it. Not even in a practice round. Also check the back of you, that could've got me. I thought about moving it, but I didn't, I should've. Last time we were here, I showed you this. This time the tee pad exposed itself and I have enough room that I could do a standstill so I get to play legit. This is another one at 220 feet. I'm gonna go with my flippier pig. Without the improper footing, I don't have to get as upright as much so I could go about my normal balance. Get in. It's close but shorter than I thought, about 15 feet. I was hoping barking at it would help it. Like I said, I'm not filming 10 footers for the sake of uh, saving film footage and making things easier. But this does show that it was close to an ace run. And you get to see the green. This one I think is closer to 230. 
Last time I was here on this three stretch birdie run, I got the last two and missed this one. This time I got these two and hopefully I think I could change that. The main reason why is because it already happened last week and the pain's still there. Last week too, it was improper footing. So I did a standstill with a glow pig because I had to get more upright. I'm gonna go about my normal pig today. Get in. Oh my God. You were waiting for that, weren't you? I almost did it. Just like I thought, my drives are doing a lot better today and feeling a lot better. And that's because obviously it's cement pads and not ice and snow. I'm not a bad player in the ice and snow. I'm pretty good in the ice and snow. But no matter what, no matter how good you get at the ice and snow, you're still always gonna play like shit in the ice and snow. That's why I don't do it. Another one close to an ace run. Ooh, it's soupy. Swappy. Yeah, that was close. I guess since I missed it last time, we're gonna record it this time. Obviously, this is an exception to that rule. This one's 270 feet. It's a forehand shot, but you can still take a backhand route with a putter or mid and just get a little bit of fade and land about circle's edge or 40 feet. A lot of people like doing that. But I don't know what it is about this hole. Something about this hole, it's like one of the best forehand routes to take in any course I've ever played. I love this hole and I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna go forehand. Flip, no! That actually was looking at another ace run or a park job at least. I think the reason I like this hole is because it's a touch forehand that flips up to flat for about 270 feet and then small fade. Really, really fun line to throw. Not my favorite spot to be. I landed here and the only thing I really have is a step out over all this stuff. And then I gotta put you guys right here. I'm just happy to get up from here with that footing. I didn't show you guys this last time, but this basket is kind of elevated actually. It doesn't look like it, but it stands as tall as I do. And there we go. In some areas, it's taller than me, where right now it's like six, three. And it's easy to go long and have a comebacker. Nothing too crazy, though. This one's a 250 foot touch forehand, very touchy forehand. You could do a backhand flex line or a slight turn, but because the arm swing for the backhand is higher and it naturally wants to throw higher, you almost have to kind of throw it down on that flex line, which makes it hard to keep it in the air to come back. So forehand's really the only option for me. There's also a big spike forehand, but I don't feel like killing my arm today. And I'm not a forehand dominant player. Ooh, T-pad's in a bad location actually, I just realized that. We need the T-pad more left. Yeah, that was actually like a good line for the disc, but the T-pad is shifted a little more. Like I'd like to be here and finish here if I could. And that's off the T-pad still. There's where I landed after the tree, that tree. And this is the center of that fairway where you want to get through. And uh, this is actually right here is looking straight from the T-pad. So you, see, you can kind of just see how this holds very hard. And right there's the hanging basket. I like the hanging basket. I do like this hole a lot, but it's it's quite hard. Normally I throw a thumber on it, which is probably what I should have did today. So these two trees gave me a gap, which is great, but because these trees are in front of me, I'm just gonna do a putter approach forehand because of the accuracy with it. And I also need the practice. That snow stopped me. Not too bad. There's the hanging basket. I thought that was about to go through. This one says 212 feet, literally straight down the middle. And with that low ceiling, the backhand route gets real tough. And with this tree on the right, this is from the tee pad. So I actually take a forehand putter shot now. I feel like that's the best route here because you got this gap that's more open on the left, even though it doesn't look like it. The line is just so peculiar on the right. Last time I had to throw flat because of the ice, so I used my overstable pig. Now that I'm able to get a little bit of a hyzer flip, I'm gonna try my flippy pig. And that's why I get away from it. I knew that was gonna happen. I really love those R-Pro pigs, but they get beat pretty quickly and then they get too flippy. And then you have a nice touchy backhand disc and maybe a forehand upshot disc, but you can't really put much power on the forehands anymore after they break in. I'm playing pretty well though. And this is actually the first hole that I think I'm gonna have a chance of uh, losing to my last round at. Unless, uh, unless I make this putt. 
definitely close enough. Yes! That feels so good. Honestly, those are the shots. Putts like that are the reason I come out. Not just for the sake of backhand drives and all that, but I've been doing that for a while. But my putting has improved and, I mean, just disc golf in general. But, you know, you know what I mean. When you get a shot like that. Well, this is kind of cool. A little low, but also cool. Hole 10 is that weird one that I pointed out last week. It's 100 feet that way and like 60 feet that way. 158 feet total. It's a two-shot hole. But there is a gap that everybody takes right down the center there to the basket. Thing is, the water comes into play, and then you're pretty much guaranteed a water stroke if you don't make it. And you're pretty much guaranteed not making it. Last time I was here, though, I peered the gap perfectly. And since I already did that, I'm going to show you the other shot I take, which is a forehand roller. Probably not going to work out too well with the uh, snow and ice. Good, actually. I'm wondering if that was actually... Uh, because of the snow and ice, it was a little more solid ground, and that's why the roller went pretty well. Because normally I do a roller on the snow and ice, it doesn't do that. So it must be like, I don't know, just a good, good cemented ground here. And a lot of times I throw rollers when there's no snow and ice. I don't know what it is, but I feel like every time I throw a roller, I always find the stone or rock or stick or whatever in the fairway that's right there blocking it. And it just jets me over that way. <laughs> this is kind of funny, actually. I love when this happens. Let's see if I get it. I completely just put in my head that there's the water behind it. I completely forgot about that. The river is directly behind it. And if I run it, I might go OB. Whew. All right, it, it's, it's a good day today. I like today. I mean, I like every day I come out, but it's a good throwing day today as well. And uh, in all honesty, I, I kind of like filming my rounds because it kind of adds the pressure and it makes me play a lot better. At first I was having a little bit of trouble with camera shy, but now it's like, I don't know, it really kind of adds that drive and motive for me. So thank you. Hole 11 is 264 feet, goes out way left. You can get there in one shot, but it's real hard. I had my champion eight last, blah, champion eight last time. I left it here, I think, and now I got my champion firebird. I need a slower disc anyways for this hole, so it's perfect. Last time I was here, my camera died on me too because I figured out how to switch it to 4K resolution and my battery kept dying at 60%. And I don't know if it was because of the actual 4K or because of the cold weather. But I'm happy to point out that I think it's because of the cold weather because I'm at like 30 something percent right now and we're still cooking in high resolution. So, all right, here we go. Oh my God, because I pointed that out, it died on me. I guess my camera is more temperamental than I am. I'm just gonna throw this disc. 31%. Oh, that's really good, actually. Awesome, almost fell. I really hope I make this, because my putting's been good, and I'm just not gonna believe it. And this is actually a really good stance I'm good at. but I missed it because I was worried about the camera dying on me. Prime example there of what the uh, change of brain can do to the momentum shift. Because I was on a good run right there where I know I would have made that putt. But because of the camera dying situation and all that, I mean, it's just excuses, but it's just something I need to work on to practice stronger mentally. Okay, so what happened there? I was in the zone, I was making putts. I got to that point where I was about 35, 40 feet away and a putt I really shouldn't make, especially it's a putt that really caters to my style, but I didn't. Well, what happened was I was getting the momentum going and then there was a major mental shift change in the thing I was doing and a pace change. And that's gonna completely change everything I'm doing and changing how the feeling goes and how the momentum goes. So you gotta learn how to practice on getting through those big mental changes and keeping your I guess emotions in check, but it's really just keeping your mo momentum going. Keeping your emotions in check isn't really a good way of saying it, but just keeping things level and keeping everything just moving. This one's 226 feet. This thing's right over the tee pad. It's a touch forehand or a lofty putter backhand over those bushes. I really like that putter option. What do I use for a lofty putter? A super beat up R Pro pick. Oh, this is way over. I might have to do a standstill from here. Oh. 
That's not at all what I wanted. That momentum shift got me, but I'll get it back. The basket's right under that hanging, or that angled tree. Maybe I can make this after all that nonsense, though. It's a bid. This one's 280 foot of just weird. It seems like it's a straight shot, but you can get caught up in the fairway really easily here, and I don't know how. Uh, slightly uphill, so it treats it like more 300 feet. I'm gonna go with the buzz. That was amazing. I love that. That was great. Nothing like throwing frisbees in the woods to make you feel like a kid again. Yep, parked it. This feels good because I, I don't really always park. This, this hole is actually hard to park. You wouldn't think it would be that hard to park. Oh my god, I'm actually shooting really well today, which is weird because I thought I'd be shooting worse than uh, last week. But it's probably because the snow and ice is gone. This is a backhand flex line, 280 feet. You pretty much follow the snow. The snow's actually trailing the uh, fairway right now. But if you're like 400 plus foot forehand dominant player, I'm at the edge of the tee pad right now. And I really recommend this flex high forehand line that dumps right in at the basket. My forehand's not quite up to that speed yet in the winter time especially. So what I like to do is I like to just take a buzz and go straight up the gut. And instead of doing a flex line, I like to just hope I get through those trees because there's not a whole lot of them. And if not, I'm still 40 feet away for a putt. A little left, a little left. Come on. I got through though, so I'm probably 30 feet away at Circle's Edge. This is looking back at the basket. I'm over here. That one stings. That's unfortunate. I had something in my footing that was preventing me from getting a solid base. So I tried getting a upswing, a little bit more power on just my swing to fit combat that. I almost did, but not quite enough. This one's 275 feet. There is kind of a forehand route, but it's only because there's a gap open over there from lack of trees. It's mainly just a backhand hyzer line that's pretty peculiar and lands you about circles at your 40 feet. You can park it, but it's pretty hard. It's very touchy. I'm going to go with the Champion Firebird, even though it's so short because it's too easy to go long into those woods that's forward over there and not get enough left. And even if you get enough left, you're usually still getting those woods. So I learned to get away from a mid-range or a putter and try and get a fairway driver that's fast and overstable and just dumps right away. And then you get a big skip like that. When I said something about that skip, it was actually sarcastic if you couldn't tell. You don't want to go far left. But left is better than right. If you go right into that woods that's forward, you like essentially have no shot. You have to pray you get through. You might even end up with a four or five from there. Here I at least have a putt. The opening was over here. I did a big flare skip. So we're actually on the left of the basket right now. Gotta do a straddle and those aren't my strongest suit, but I'm not bad at them. Yes. Oh, it's a great day today. This hole's 245 feet and kind of ridiculous, honestly. It's one of my least favorite holes here. And it's kind of like a flex or slight turnover forehand, but there's so much risk. Or you could go up that middle and there's so much risk. So the way I learned to play, especially since my score is doing pretty good, is just to play this as a three and just do a simple hyzer so that all the risk is gone. I threw that low, but that's essentially what I do is just land there and make the putter or up it. Here's that backhand up the gut route that only popped up just recently over the last couple years. And it's, it's so much risk because there's nothing in there. And that's pretty much where you're gonna go. And if you go over here, still nothing. And then the forehand, you saw how tight that was and how low ceiling it was. And it bends real hard over. So you almost can't even come back with a proper disc. And that, obviously, you're gonna bounce and go in all this stuff. Yeah, so I just play a safe hyzer to this point here where it opens up. And then there's the basket. I just kinda make it an easy three or a, uh, Skillful too. These trees are put up in a peculiar way that I really don't have, even on a straddle, I really don't have a shot at it. I'm probably gonna do this Annie route, and yeah, it's there, but it takes my uh, chances of making it away. 
That was actually a fair bit. I can't remember if we finished with two par fours or a par four or par three, but this one's definitely par four and I love my par fours. This one's 405 feet. A lot of people would take a big spike hyzer over those trees, but those trees are kind of tall. So the only thing it does is cut you short of distance and increases your chance of falling back in the woods or anything like that. So your choice really is just to go up the gut, maybe get through the trees. The gap I was talking about was two trees over, the bigger gap. I, I threw a little more left than I wanted to, unfortunately. Bad thing is, is typically you'd be like, no big deal. But uh, on this hole, if you do that and you end up bouncing, not forward and backward, you're actually kind of taking yourself out of the birdie chance. It's actually pretty, pretty risky and pretty guarded there. There I am, right there. Whether or not if you see it, it's right there. And then I got a little something to work with, but not much. Basket's way down there. Yeah, that's pretty much all I could do. The fairway is now a pond blocking me between me and my disc. No chance, it's mine. Oh, mine. Looks like another forehand putter shot, but this one I'm gonna try and make. Get in, please. Oh, man. Yeah, not bad of a run. Uh, not as close as I thought, but still pretty close. This one's 430 feet. It's a par four, par three. I'll put it down here for you when I find out. But to me, it's a par three because it's straight down there and it's about a little over circle two to get right. So it's just a really hard par three. I usually do a roller here, but with the ground play, it's kind of set up for a roller. But with the ground play being snow, I'm not getting a long distance backhand roller there. If you have a huge forehand, you could do that too. But I mean, you need a big forehand. Too much. Failed at keeping that low. That was a bad shot. All right, from here, I'm not really too happy about this. You would, I'm probably gonna get a four. You think you wanna do a hyzer route? Go around there, or maybe even a step out. Hyzer on the inside. But with the snow and no skip, and it's a little guarded, it's kind of more difficult to get there. I do see a route though, a backhand high any route. That way it can drown this out a little longer. I'm better at those, so hopefully we can do it. A little too inside. I haven't needed to do that shot in a while, so I definitely need to refine that talent. I'd really hate to finish this with a par on a par four and a bogey on a par three at the end of it, so I'm gonna try and make this. Oh no, too much mud. Perfect example of uh, golf being a roller coaster of emotions. I was flying pretty high there. Still had a great day, still had a good day, but uh, sucks I finished it with two fours on a par four and a par three. All right, thank you for watching. See you guys later. Go figure, I get back home and it's sunny out now. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. See you in the next video. See you in the next round coverage.